Hey, Connor Consulman here, Director of Customer Success at ClearCalx. In this video, I wanted to walk through a quick overview of our US steel beam calculator. So I'm sharing my screen here. Um, I have started a new project and just put in some generic information. And the first thing I'm going to do to add a new calculation here is click this add new calculation, of course. And then you'll notice that we have our different calculators broken down into beams, columns, foundation walls, and so on. Um, but we, what we want to focus on for this video is our two steel beam calculators. Now you can see here that we offer both ASD and LRFD calculation methods. Um, from your point of view, they're going to look exactly the same. We're making sure to do the correct um, multiplication factors on our end. So it really just depends on what you like to use or what your local jurisdiction requires here for steel beams. So what I'll do is just because this is the more popular one for steel, I'll click on LRFD. Know that it's the same exact workflow. It's the same exact user interface here. So what we'll see here when I click on steel beams is we have all these different presets. So the reason we do this is because a beam is a beam is a beam. All these different beam types are the same calculations at the end of the day, but we want to open up different presets to help you bump along to that finish line a bit earlier. So what we mean here is, for example, if we opened up, say, a floor joist beam calculator, and then once this loads up, maybe I'll change this to steel floor joist one. And I'll hop back on the overview here, but I just want to point out the preset information. So we'll see because we've opened up a floor joist, we're already saying tributary width or center to center spacing is 16 inches. We threw in a default floor load. If I scroll back up here, we're also saying that it's braced in the top flange. We're selecting a common uh, steel beam floor joist selection here, just hopefully pre-filling things out to help you along to that finish line. Now compare that to if we opened up maybe the rafter calculator. You'll notice that the calculator looks very similar, but we're already, if we come down here to the loads, we're filling in a roof load, a snow load, a wind load, just more common rafter loads. Uh, again, hoping to bump along that finish line and hopefully you're not missing any common loads there. So I'll stick in this rafter because uh, like I mentioned, our steel beams all look the same. Similar to all our other calculators, what you'll have is all your inputs are going to be on the left hand side of your screen and all your outputs are going to be on the right hand side of your screen in clear calcs everything on the right hand side we're never going to have to touch all of these are going to be updating real time based on the inputs that we put on the left and then of course we've got our traffic light checks here or our utilization checks so check out our other help content to dive into those a bit deeper, but really what those are, are demand over capacity. So a quick view here, the demand is 3780. The capacity of this specific beam, this default beam that's been selected is uh, 23,400. Divide those, that's where the 0.16 or 16% comes from. So within all of our beam calculators, we have required inputs and then optional inputs. Now, some of you might be used to seeing a lot less inputs in your calculation software. What we like to do at ClearCalx is include all the information to give you the flexibility to modify those if you need, but know that if they are optional fields, um, we are defaulting to the, the code minimums or code standards, some conservative estimates there. So I'm gonna really quickly show the required inputs. So what those are, are your beam plan length. Of course, I'm making confusing here because with the rafter, you will need to put in your incline pitch uh, for all the other ones that aren't inclined. You'll just see the beam plan length. But of course, if you are designing a rafter, we're going to need to know the incline there because that affects your loads. So to reiterate there, first required is beam plan length. Our second required here is supports and braces. And then the last required input is inputting any additional or modifying these existing loads here. So you'll note that we have distributed loads, pounds per square foot, PSF. We also offer line loads or PLF, 
and then point and moment loads. So if I'll scroll back up here, let's say I modify our beam plan link just to show you how the right side changes in real time. Maybe this is actually an 18 foot long rafter at 612 pitch. So the actual material length here, because of Pythagorean's theorem, is 20 feet, one and a half inches. We can modify these supports as much as we'd like. We could also use what we call our debug mode here or our help accordion to expand any of these inputs and learn more about what we're asking for there. Even get code and standard references. So maybe on this left-hand side, we'll bump that over one foot because we, we have a one foot overhang. You'll see that this modified in real time. And then same thing with the loads. If you want some additional information on how to input loads, how to input these different load combinations, maybe add different loads, uh, check out our help content with how to add that. And then lastly here, what I want to point out is once you've input all the other information, what we could do here is just come up to select to select our most optimal beam. So we could use any of these filters. Since we're in the steel beam, we can select our cross section. We could even give clear calcs a max depth or max width if we're kind of maybe we're doing a basement beam or something like that of course this is a rafter example uh, but you get the idea where we are kind of limited to headspace or anything like that and then now we can essentially choose the most optimal section here so theoretically most optimal will be highest percentage that's still under 100 percent that means it's still passing it's not overloaded based on the code um, or its capacity and then kind of how close you want to get to 100 really comes up to your engineering judgment. Really quick before I end this video, as always, if you click this help button on the bottom right, you'll get answers and articles, worked examples, videos like this one related to the calculator you're in. You could also click ask, click email, and contact our engineering team directly. As you know, we take one of our structural engineers every day or six days a week i should say and all they do is respond to emails and customer service customer support is something um, we don't take lightly here and something that we value greatly so i hope this video helps with this u.s steel beam calculator overview and look forward to connecting in the future